I took one of the most important endurance tests that every athlete should do, and we're gonna start, right? <sighs> so two months ago from you seeing this video, I took a VO2 max test. One of the reasons why I took this test was because I used to be an absolute hoss, meaning I weighed over 300 pounds. I was a Husky Bull. Now, one of the big factors is that as I've aged, I've gotten to the age of 40 at this current point. Check out these nice grays. One of the big factors here is that I wanna make sure my aerobic capacity is optimal. I wanna make sure that my cardiac output is in a good position. And that brings us to that VO2 max. One of the big factors is, I invested in this sweet Garmin and I wanted to look at my telemetric devices and figure out what is actually going on. How can I listen to someone like Peter Atia who says VO2 max is the most important aspect around longevity or around having a good lifespan. And so one of the big factors here is that I want to optimize that VO2 max. I want to make sure that my body can bring in a large amount of oxygen and deliver that to my muscles. I want to make sure that on that measurement, we're looking at milliliters per kilogram per minute. And that's going to help me understand what that VO2 max number is on my Garmin. And if I can increase my maximum heart rate, or if I can get to identifying my maximum heart rate, can then improve my overall training. And I can try to increase that VO2 max, or in reality, increase my body's ability to handle oxygen and deliver that to my muscles. So if we can do this over a long period of time, we're gonna improve our longevity, but we're also gonna improve that cardiac output as athletes. Having a high or having a low VO2 max will matter. If we have a high VO2 max, that's gonna be directly related to drastically decreasing our all-cause mortality, and even seeing in research that the top 2% of the population that has a very high VO2 max will actually have a drastically lower risk of a cardiovascular event. In essence, a high VO2 max will show that you have cardiovascular health. On the flip side, the bottom 25% of the population had a five-fold increase in cardiorespiratory problems. So if we're looking at this, the bottom 25% has a five times greater rate of just having some serious health issues. So personally, at the age of 40, I wanted to go in and see, are my watches actually accurate? Is my VO2 max on my watch accurate related to the actual machine? The second big aspect is that I wanted to see, where is my VO2 max? What can I do to improve that? And how can I become a healthier version of myself? And then finally, I wanted to just have that baseline number. If I have that baseline number at the age of 40, I can come back and look at this when I'm 50. I can come back and look at this when I'm 55 or 60 and try to improve that over time. But when we're thinking about sports, since specifically athletes. Where's the correlation between being an athlete and that high VO2 max? So because VO2 max has a positive impact on general health, everyone can benefit. Grandma, granddad, whoever you can think of, they can benefit from increasing their VO2 max. Now in relationship to sports or athletics, we need to look at things through what we term our sports depth series. And we look through five different levels of sport depths. And these depths of athletics are gonna be based upon impulse, endurance, speed, and strength. Okay, so we base that down and then we look at the percentages based off of what the quality for those specific sports are. Okay, so if we're looking at sport depth one, this is typically gonna be power-based sports. This is where I live most of my life, so I just wanted to get as strong as possible, do things in a short time frame, and have minimal endurance. If we're looking at sport depth two, this is gonna be the realm where we see running backs, linebackers, athletes along that line, where they need some endurance, but they don't need a ton. What that does then is it takes us into sport depth three through five, and that's where we're gonna see VO2 max have a massive positive impact. Depth three is considered the keystone depth, okay? And this is typically where we see interval-based work really paying off big time. Think about wrestlers, think about MMA. Okay, that's gonna be sport depth three. Sport depth four is gonna take us into that continuous go. Think about soccer, lacrosse, field hockey. That's the sport depth where we really, really start to see VO2 max have a big impact. And then finally, sport depth five is where endurance is going to play a major role. This is where we see that sport depth five being the great distance. This is gonna be where we think about distance runners, long distance swimmers, marathoners, okay? So if we can impact our VO2 max, we'll be able to execute these long distances at a faster tempo. 
Now having all this information gives us the importance in the background behind the actual test and how it can help you as an athlete. But what actually is the test and why was I feeling so much anxiety around taking the actual test? 146 over 86. It's pretty high right now. It's a lot higher than it should be. Dude, I'm definitely nervous. <laughs> Oftentimes when you're taking the VO2 max test, there's a couple different things that you can do. You can either get on a bike or you could get on a treadmill and they're going to place this massive mask with a huge tube around you that then connects into a machine and measures your input of oxygen and measures how much oxygen is going in and how much carbon dioxide is coming out. Now, in our specific test, we were using a VO2 master, and I'm gonna provide a link down below in the description that you can click on to go check out that VO2 master. This is a lot simpler machine, and it is extraordinarily accurate in comparison to even just having the oxygen tube. You put the mask on your face and it's extraordinarily tight. You sort of feel like you're Bane, essentially, while you're masked up. And one of the aspects there is that you almost feel a little claustrophobic or like you're being suffocated to a point, but after a little while, you do start to get a little bit more comfortable. It's not that bad. It's like a little pinchy on my nose. Like I, I feel more claustrophobic when I get my blood pressure drawn. It's amazing how like suctioned it is. Yeah, how up in your face it is. And so again, that mask will then measure how much oxygen is coming in, how much CO2 is being expressed as we work through this entire test and we elevate our heart rate to try and get to that max heart rate. So we're really going to be essentially pushing to failure. On top of that, I wanted to test well. I wanted to do as well as I possibly could and possibly beat Earl's score where he scored a 49.8. Now, as I was running on the test, I felt as though I was running quickly. Watching the video, I clearly was not. The thing that actually happens then is that every two minutes they raise the elevation of the treadmill. So by the time you get to eight to 10 minutes to 12 minutes, you're running at a pretty steep incline. So that makes it a lot harder to execute at that same speed. And in turn, your heart rate starts to skyrocket. Essentially, I got to the point where I personally felt like my legs were going to fall off. <laughs> All good. All right, man. You did good. Thanks. Right. Uh, Damn, if I had more in him, I was going to take pictures. <laughs> and then it was over. It was pretty awful, but I did survive. So how was the test? I think the test actually was pretty worth it. It was fun to get that baseline reading. It was fun to actually get the test done, even though it was horribly painful. And that's one big factor here is that if you don't have access to a lab or access to the machine or access to an individual who can apply the test, one thing you can do to just think about improving your VO2 max is to train in the realm of high intensity interval work at least one time a week. And I would recommend doing something for three to five minutes, okay? So let's just say theoretically, you're doing some aerobic work on the assault bike. You need to hold, let's say 70 RPMs on the assault bike for three to five minutes. And you try to do that for four to 10 sets. And you can get your heart rate up to around 90% of your maximum heart rate now you do that for three to five minutes and then you rest for two to three minutes and you repeat that over and over and over again. The problem here is that intervals is really where you're gonna be at when you're trying to build that VO2 max, but you also have to recover from that interval-based work. So over a long period of time, if you're doing too much interval work, it's gonna beat you down. But if you can find that sweet spot, it's going to really increase that VO2 max. So was it worth it to take this test? And more specifically, what were the results? So what was my test score? It ended up being a terrible 42, extremely mediocre, which is wild because I actually ran a marathon with a 42 VO2 max. I think the cool part here is that I can really look at what I need to do to improve my VO2 max. My Garmin still says I'm around 46 to 47, but we're gonna go based off the test. Also, I ended up getting a VO2 master because I want to test myself on the assault bike, I wanna test myself when I'm running, and I wanna test myself on the rower and see what actually happens. Over a long period of time, ideally I'd like to test myself quarterly, and I know that I'm gonna to start to introduce more high intensity interval training. I'm gonna to start to run more hills at higher clips, and I'm gonna do more assault bike work where I'm doing like the Ronstadt protocol to try and increase that VO2 max long term. 
And fortunately for me, I do have my Garmin, which shows me my maximum heart rate. It shows me my heart rate when I'm training. So I can sort of use that as a guide when I'm doing that high intensity interval work. Now for you guys, if you're interested in improving your VO2 max, Peak Strength, our strength training app, is undergoing some freaking awesome renovations. We're improving our overall programming and we're increasing the amount of impulse work, speed work, and endurance-based training. So head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store or the Apple iOS Store, and you can download Peak Strength today and select the specific program type that you want so that you can train to become a freak. Because remember, freaks, if you want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.